Sword Fight November 2018 edition. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, people and persons, beings of all ages, welcome. I think Azrael got a little hung up on our feature from last month because her name is on here too. Oh, sorry. But, the most importantly, we have a sword fight tonight. Woo! So for those of you who have not seen a sword fight in the past, you can picture a poetry slam mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you get the idea. It's a lot of mixing. Woo. <laughs> Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. What you are about to see is a head-to-head -head battle of wits and words with a little bit of trash talk sprinkled in. We take two fighters and put them in a three-round competition. Round one is two minutes each. Round two is three minutes each. And round three is four minutes each. They're all fighting for this thing. Uh, that thing's not being fought for Can until January. Can it be January. sharpened? Right. But they're fighting. <laughs> everyone is fighting to eventually get this in January. I want to write get two that. of the competition in January. <laughs> but absolutely. You could just write it. Can it be sharpened? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I will write with All right, all right. So a little bit more about this competition. Fighters can squeeze as many pieces into their round as they want. For example, if you can squeeze 80 haiku into two minutes, go for it. However, there is no grace period. When time is up, fighters must stop or they're disqualified. You'll hear a knocking sound at 10 seconds to go in the round. Judge, uh, rounds are judged on a 10 point must system. The winner gets 10 points and the loser gets nine points or less. Judges are asked to judge based on six main qualities. Clarity of speech, efficient use of time and passion, word choice, impact, and originality. A seventh quality the judges should apply to themselves is consistency. If they judge one fighter on a certain quality, they should use the same rubric with the other fighter. While the sword fight program asks the fighters to portray characters, all scores are legitimate and contribute to the, the sword fight's persistent and ever-progressing storyline. Before we begin, I must bring your attention to the Writing Nights Patreon. The perfect way to get all of Writing Night's upcoming and past books every month without worrying about paying for them piecemeal and how to show support for the product so we can pay folks, pay folks, woo, pay folks. Woo. Like for our monthly features and sword fighters. Woo. All right. So I was wrong. We, are, we actually have to do live, otherwise the camera can't handle it. <laughs> oh, okay. So we will be on Facebook Live this evening. So, um, Yay. so when All it right, goes so on uh, writing nights, uh, the Facebook page, um, yep. go ahead and share it. So yes, while we're, Azrael's doing that, I will introduce our judges. We have a, a, a very last minute fill-in judge, very much appreciated, Derek Terrell. Woo! Woo! Derek. Woo! And I am so sorry, I've already forgotten your name. <laughs> Paul. Paul, thank you. Paul's been scheduled for a little while, but not the me by Hasbro. <laughs> and then we also have over here, who has often represented the angry cow, we have Keith Allison. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right. So, as far as our competitors this evening, we have in this corner, the Khaleesi of Canton, Ohio, your feminist superhero, Daria Quinn. Woo! Woo! Anyone want to issue a challenge to Daria for this evening? I do! Yay! Kara, get up here! Woo! Welcome! Welcome! Do you want to say anything by way of introduction other than you are a writer so powerful your words can slay cancer? No, not really. Okay. Slay cancer is good enough. <laughs> All right, so we can flip a coin to see who goes first. Does anybody have a coin? I do. Good. Right. All right. Can you flip the pencil? Yeah, we can flip the pencil. Okay. I will. Okay. Um, I need your phone for a timer. Yeah, I was going to time it. All right. All right. All right. Who wants? So, Darius, what's your schedule? Heads or tails? Uh, tails. Tails. Heads. That means carries to choose. You want to go first or second? 
first, but where do I look when I'm reading? Where Everywhere you, you want to look. Where do I look? Where do I look? I can't read. Like, it's like, hard. It's like, it's like, it's like, I can't read. I'm just a little nervous, okay? Stand up and be Martin Luther King Jr. if you want to. It might be having a little anxiety attack. That's fine. We all do. Look, I'm doing way. Oh, yeah. So. All right. I get up? So, yes, right you can get up. I will sit down and you have the floor. Okay. Uh, Give her a countdown. Yes. Five, five four, three, two, don't you? one. Well, I'm Kara. The first thing you need to know is I don't really title my poems because you might gonna hear a lot of entitled today. Let's talk to that real bitch cancer. You just weaseled your way in and attacked the essence of my physicality. Bitch, you haven't done it once, not twice, but three times. You squirmed yourself into me and made a home in the hollow parts where my kidney used to be. We plotted and raised a violent attack against you. The attack split me, oh, it split me open from breast to hip. Afterwards, I was disembodied. Pain surged and rumbled me. Slowly I healed, but you left me only for a season. Cancer, you squatter. You left your microscopic tendrils behind, leading you to get settled in, causing you to plant deeply within me. You weave and cushion my organs like you're an asset or a comfort to me, but you are nothing but a pariah and you have no plans to leave. This next poem, um, I was just called I'm the Fighter. I wrote it um, the second time I found I had cancer. <laughs> I'm a fighter. My goal is to stand in the ring victorious. My opponent is bigger and stronger than I. Winning this battle is almost impossible, but I refuse to give up. I'm putting on my hot pink boxing gloves, facing my opponent ready to swing. Each round I will battle with all my might, punching, blocking, kicking, and screaming. I will fight as blood pours down my face. I will kick and punch as hard as I can. Thank you, Kara. Woo. All right, Daria, it is your Woo. turn. Woo. 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 Five, four, Three, two, one. Riding on the bus with headphones on. I don't appear to be feminine, so people just usually leave me alone. I've managed to go a very long time without being physically attacked. High school is the last time I remember anything like that. Still, the reality of being perceived as feminine in public comes with risks. Risks I can seemingly mitigate by appearing less feminine. But I wouldn't call this presentation masculine. It gives power to the false idea that masculine presentation is a default setting. There's nothing inherently masculine about a hoodie and sweatpants. Hell, more women than men I know wear this stuff anyway. Men wear jeans or shorts or slacks. Women wear sweats and yoga pants, unless you're me. Then hopefully you're just invisible. Because I know this won't last. The only reason I haven't been attacked since my transition is because not enough time has passed. This illusion of masculinity doesn't really protect me. It only exists as a deterrent, something I do for peace of mind. One of these days, I'm going to be attacked. And it's not going to matter what I look like or how I dress. I can dress in a way that makes me less likely to be targeted, but I will be targeted. Whether it's by a man who wants to assert his power over a woman or from a bigot who thinks they know my gender better than I do. It could be a sex crime or a hate crime, maybe both. I might survive this, the, the experience, but I might not. Every time I step outside of my home, I am at risk, even if all I'm doing is riding the bus with headphones on. All right, do either of you want to say how you feel after this first round? Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. Right. I'm a little, okay. I'm a little, um, little under 
your plane today? Oh, oh. I told you I was going to kick your ass. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, 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 I was preparing for somebody of sound body and mind. Oh! Oh, shit. But instead, <laughs> oh! I, I'm taking on Francesca's mom. Oh, <laughs> you thought yeah. you could beat me? Could you beat my mom? Oh, uh, I did beat Okay, you, you did, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you're still working on your win. Uh, and by the way, kudos on that because a lot of people in your position would have just given up. So. I'm very obsessed with I see that. <laughs> but your, your, mom has, your mom has come out of her busy day uh, fighting cancer and kicking its ass to attempt to, speak, to step up to my level. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that when I do defeat you, um, fear not because, well, you're, at a, you're working at a disadvantage. I mean, it's like, you know, how, how are you going to beat me if you're spending all your energy fighting cancer? Hey, babe, I got glass <laughs> <laughs> All right, in round two, each fighter gets three minutes, and they go in the opposite order as before. So, Daria, it's on you. Five, four, three, two, and one. Why must you mix politics with your art? Don't you ever write about anything that makes you happy? Well, what makes me happy is smashing patriarchy while serving myself as a valid human being. LGBTQ rights mean everything to someone who happens to be LGBTQ, and that just happens to be me. So yeah, maybe talking about that makes me happy. Too many people have tried too hard to pretend that people like me don't exist. They close their eyes, plug their ears, so I like it when I make it impossible to ignore that people like me are real and just as human as they are. Well, maybe. I'm not always sure. It's hard to find Nazis that aren't pure evil, wrapped up in skin, pretending to be people, dressed up like wolves passing off as sheep, and a mile-like smorgasbord of things they'd like to eat. So maybe I don't care about being civil to a bunch of assholes who'd rather see me dead than to be the queer transgender woman here before you. I am done pretending to be nice to the fanatical right-wing Bible-thumping types. <clears throat> your, sick, your sick revision of Jesus never got it right, never mind the fact that you think he's fucking white. Mm -hmm. We are here to stay, and you will never win. Queers are like Hydra, a dragon you can't slay. Caught off a head, two more will grow back in its place. The more you clutch your pearls, the more brazen I become. Because making you mad is how I get my kicks. You want a happy poem? This is your happy poem. And that is why I mix art with politics. Nice. A passing glance of wicked admission, she takes the stage, smiling as she greets a bloated figure of spoiled indulgence. She proceeds to let him dominate the conversation, as if his ideas have merit. She, she responds by conceding her defeat, and watches silently as he claims her ideas as his own. Invisible woman, never meant to be seen or heard, for when she speaks, her words become the void. Give the words to a man, and he's praised for his prestigious insight. But let a woman speak. Mm. Get red or get dead, everybody go to bed. Kim Jong-un just got himself a warhead. Trump's in the White House, we're in the poor house. White folk talking about Nazis like the Mickey Mouse. Caging up immigrants, snatching up all our kids, sending them to white folk, living up in Norfolk. Institute a travel ban, send them back to Pakistan. Spend a billion dollars to institute some space cops while telling poor folk to stop buying cell phones. You can either eat or you can have health care. You can't have both, so poor folk best beware. Spray tanned America is kind of a shithole. I really don't care, do you? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Daria, how do you feel so far? Um, someone emboldened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kara, your Woo! three minute Woo! round. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Well, I didn't get to finish my last poem, and it's more important to me probably than it is to you. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Each round I will battle with all my might, punching, blocking, kicking, and screaming. I will fight as blood pours down my face. I will kick and punch as hard as I can. At times I'll get sucker punched right in the face. Every punch will hurt. 
I'll feel every blow. Sometimes I'll get knocked out. If I lay flat face in the boxing ring while the referee counts, one, two, three, four. Don't count me out until the referee says ten. I may just rise and ready to fight again. Mm. Now the next one I'm going to read is called Ragdoll. I'm a ragdoll, just a regular raggedy Ann. You both fight over me. One hugs me to the left while the other jerks me to the right. I cannot speak up or fight back. My face is fixed with these twinkling eyes and this painted smile. In this tug of war, my lifeless head jerks back and forth, and my red locks dangle from side to side. I do not have the strength of a braided rope. If you pull me too hard, you will split me in half, exposing my sensitive stuffing. I will be in a terrible jam, and my damage would rest squarely on your shoulders. But see, I'm not a rag doll. Look at my arms. I able, my elbows bend and my fingers flex. You can tug at me and I have the power to let go. And if you look at my face, it isn't painted. My eyes can tear up or twinkle. That's not all. My lips can move and I can speak, frown or smile. My body isn't lifeless. I am alive. Yet still I stand silent, letting you tug me back and forth. Each of you grasping one of my hands, pulling me lifelessly, flopping my head back and forth and side to side. <clears throat> I might as well be a rag doll because I haven't taken control. I haven't spoken up. And when I break from the pressure exposing my sensitive stuffing, the damage rests squarely on me. Uh, the next one I'm going to read is about my mother. <laughs> um, my mother and my husband, she'll say. My mom, mom, you dislike him. No, you hate my husband. Maybe another time. <laughs> you still have five seconds, keep going. <laughs> okay. You see his endless faults, I see his faults <clears throat> too. All right, maybe another time. <laughs> 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 Gotta give you points for attempting it, right? <laughs> All right, our final and four minute round. We're going to flip the coin again to determine who goes next. All right, so Kara, your turn. Heads or tails? Heads. Reflip, reflip. All right. It is tails, Daria. First or second? I'll go second. All right, Eric, we get to hear the rest of that piece, right? You know, something totally Ooh, new. All right, oh, stand no. up and share it. New Five, new four, share. three, two, one. The table is immaculately arrayed. Bowls, purple, blue, green, and orange are filled with delectable candy, bottle caps, Hershey Kisses, Chewy Spree. Skittles. In the center of the table is a silver tray with a mound of Nichols powdered donuts, six chocolate cream sticks, and a half a gallon of mint chocolate ice cream. A jumbo cabaret milk bar sits next to the candy, other candy scattered on the table. Reese's Big Cup, Twix, Milky Way, Starburst, and Krispy, and Rice Krispy Treats. And finally, there are six 20-ounce bottles of Pepsi standing like soldiers. A morbidly obese woman smiles, sits down at the table, and tucks a napkin into her shirt. Everything on the table is hers. No judgment, no one to say no. She dips her fingers into the bowls of candy, shoving them into her mouth. Her chubby cheeks are bursting with food. Next, she devours the mint chocolate chip ice cream. Her mouth is filled to capacity, yet she ate an entire cream stick in one bite. Everything is eaten so quickly. Can she even taste it? Yes. The candy, the donuts, the chocolate, and the ice cream tantalize her tongue. She shoves her face and gulps. Mouthful after mouthful, she gulps. No food on the table remains untouched. 
Well, who did you see at the table with the powdered, with powdered sugar smeared across her face? Did you see a fat girl licking the chocolate off her fingertips? Or did you see me? Because it was me. Gulping and gulping food. Swallow after swallow, it was me. That's my nightmare. My alter ego. A peek into my fantasy. I'm a binge eater, but I've never had that amount of food. Why do I binge? Well, it tastes good. And second, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> but the real reason I'm gulping down is I'm gulping down my problems. I just want to escape. I just want to push the food to dark places where I hold my secret pain. I shove them down anywhere they can fit. I want to release from the stress, the worry, the anxiety, and most importantly, I want to release from the pain. I'm eating my self-hatred, my self-disgust, but this never works. This never works. The pain now more intense siphons back into me, but yet I return to it again and again. Okay, judge me, but what about you? Everybody finds a release some way. I can focus on the drug addicts or the alcoholics, but I won't. Let's just say your problem is jelly beans. You turn around to those jelly beans again and again. You need those jelly beans. You need anything to push the emotions away because we all have to suck it up, buttercup. We got jobs to do, supervisors to please, a house to clean, a spouse to charm, a child to guide, and none of this comes easily. But I'm sick of this, aren't you? Well, I'll put down my fork and you throw away those jelly beans. No more gulping pain. This won't be easy. We have to feel that pain, that trauma. And, but we can do something fun and engaging. We can paint, draw, color, write or journal, sing, or turn the music up and scream. Talk to someone, anyone, a counselor, animals in the zoo. Call a hotline if you need to, or just chat with your kitty cat. Cry, wail, sob until you're gagging for breath. breath. It's better than shoving it, pushing it into a room, locking the door. Don't do it because... <laughs> <laughs>
a sword, an axe, a torch, and a switchblade. I think you'd find them handy should your body regenerate to reclaim the justice of the revenants. They hung you from a tree like Emmett Till for the role you played in Ferguson. It's 2018 and the strange fruit still hangs off the killing trees in St. Louis. Racism hasn't died yet and I don't know how to fight it, but I can only hope your name sparks a remedy. They try to say this was a suicide, but we can see that it's just a lie. Dane Jones, rise up and take justice in your name. We can only hope you return as a crow to right the wrongs and save the souls of the others who were murdered just the same. Mike Brown and Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Stephon Clark, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Walter Scott, Eric Harris, Laquan McDonald, Terrence Crutcher, Tony Robinson, Romaine Brisbane, Trayvon Martin, and countless others. Strange fruit dangling, murdered by white men. I left four weapons by your grave, a sword, an axe, a torch, and a switchblade. So when you rise again, you can take up your revenge on the system that helped you step into that grave. Racism hasn't died off yet, and I don't know how to fight it, but I can only hope your name sparks a remedy. They tried to say this was a suicide. We know that's a lie. Dane Jones, rise up and claim your justice. All right, so while our judges are doing their final figuring, uh, we should ask the crowd, how do you feel? Woo! All right, who, who does the, who does anybody in the audience think should win? My bad. Audience, if you, if you think Kara should win, clap and cheer right now. Woo! 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 <laughs> My ear just broke. <laughs> <laughs> if you think Daria should win, clap and cheer right now. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> that that was an attempt to fix my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Sound therapy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my ear's broken. <laughs> all right. All right. So, Agile, do we have any announcements to make as far as... Um, oh. well, we're having a food drive at the moment. Yes. That announcement later. Um, right. Well, actually, I can talk about the food drive yeah, yeah. Um, because there's quite a few, um, I'm sure, delicious things over there that have been contributed already. <laughs> and all of that food is going to the Canton Sunday Picnic, which Woo! I am one of the volunteers that runs that. So if you are still looking to contribute, the things that we can use the most of are cooking oil, brown rice, and coconut milk. Yay. Believe it or not, those are the things that so rarely get donated that we, and we go through a lot of those. So, brown rice, cooking oil, and coconut milk. Like the cans of coconut milk, or even coconut cream. Type of cooking oil. Like canola. Canola's yeah. good, um, but the mixed vegetable oil is good, and so is olive oil. Not yeah. peanut oil, because some people are allergic. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, and then we're gonna be doing a clothing drive in December. Um, which the clothing for that will go to the, the Domestic Violence Project. So it can be um, women's clothing, men's clothing, children's clothing, uh, non-gender specific clothing, um, but it does need to be intended for winter because they don't have space to store things for summer. So flip-flops, don't donate them now. <laughs> I mean, they can be used to shower shoes, but don't, don't donate bathing suits and shorts right now and not tank tops. So things that can be worn comfortably in Cold weather are the best things to donate for that. Um, I just like to say too, we're doing uh, fireman or firewood and imagination too. Patch Adams, it's going to yes. be here until the Yes, Patch, would you like to tell us about the amazing things you see on the walls here? So, uh, anyway, um, local artists, international artists. Um, what I'm doing is this is some type of work that I started doing about 20 years ago. Um, what I do is I paint with fire on wood. Wow. Uh, it's a technique that I call pyrochromatic arts, and uh, it takes quite a bit of time to do what I've done. Uh, there's variations, people that claim they paint with fire where they collect soot on canvas, they hook up car batteries to a board to where people pour uh, gunpowder on wood and set it on fire. But, 
what I've done is uh, figured out a way to actually mix mediums in a way that makes them flammable. Um, oils, acrylics, watercolors, inks, pigments, all types of stuff. So um, this is the second showing of a collection of mine for this year, hence the title, Firewood and Imagination 2. Um, the first one was at Jupiter Studios over in Alliance. Woo! Woo! So Crystal. Woo! <laughs> and uh, second those one, of you who haven't been to Jupiter Studios, yes, it is awesome. You really should go. Absolutely. Good people over there as well. Um, so this is a second showing here in Canton, and I live in Canton. And one of the things that I really enjoy about this show is usually what I show here in Canton is like you'll only get to see one or two of my works. Otherwise, you're following me on Facebook, and you'll see I, I try to post at least one a day anymore because mm -hmm. I've just mm -hmm. I've been at this for well over two decades. Um, Too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Art go back to where you know I was up in the womb, five months First long picture. <laughs> right, right, right. I said it before I said that, that it. That explains things. Drew it before I drew it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Um, this type of work I've been doing for almost 20 years now. Uh, before this, I was doing uh, glass carving. I believe I'm the first artist of Stark County to make it into Juxtapose magazine. Um, laundry list of, of accomplishments. Um, you know, I'm here for a lot of the up and coming artists, creatives. And it's not just visual artists, it's just arts in particular as far as like um, um, acting, writing, visuals. Poetry. But poetry, correct. Uh, creative arts, uh, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of it. Uh, the arts can change lives, it has changed lives. I'm living proof of that myself. So, but anyway, back to what, <laughs> what I'm doing here. So it's, it's kind of cool because you guys are seeing my work more than one or two pieces at a, t at a time. I've got over 40 pieces here, um, just a collection of, from, gosh, as far back as 2004, 2003 to 2018. And uh, it's kind of something really special. I just wanted to share with, with the community, and let you guys know, you know, there's, there is no shame in being different in what you create. I know my work is unique. I know it stands out. I don't paint on canvas. I don't paint on paper. I created a whole different style and technique. And that's honestly what it is, is finding your voice and using it and just doing it and believing in it. I'm no Picasso, but I believe in what I do. So. Firewood and imagination. It's a beautiful thing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Michael of Makeshift Makerspace and all of the hosting that they have done for us here. Ooh. All right. Yes, yes. Better stand up. Yes. Stand up. Yeah. Mug for the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> all right. In a unanimous decision, 30, 27, 30, 27, and 29, 28, our winner, Daria Quinn.
straight. Let's be honest here. That was a great performance. This yes. is a very strong woman. Absolutely. And, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, is ongoing, but uh, she's facing any courage that you know some of us could only hope to have. You're aware yes. of my. So. <laughs> I feel like you. Oh, let's hope. So. But I'm gonna kick your ass sometime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know. Right. Encore. So, I need. To, I need to see my score and see what I can do better. Yeah. Well, there were some notes. <laughs> I didn't mean that in any other way other than there were. It was just funny. The, be well. the best performers take criticism. Yes. yes, yes. So, All right, um, so we're going to go on to our open mic. We'll do, Woo! do a recorded open mic first, and then we'll shut off the cameras, and anyone who wants to share on the unrecorded can do that. All right, so who, by show of hands, who wants to be in the recorded open mic? Mad Cow. Who would want to be in the unrecorded open mic? Okay. 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 Who doesn't care? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Well, if you got something to Are share, you headed out, Derek? Okay. Okay. Not, Not legally. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Keith, would you like to start us off for the. Oh, wait, we gotta, we gotta do a call for people who want to challenge. Oh, yes, yes. So, do we are we still looking for somebody for December? Yes, we are looking for some fighters for December. So. All right. So, who to everybody like? here and everybody who is watching online or will be watching online, we want you to put out a call. Hey, we got a challenger. Over a here. Challenger. I yeah. Sure. Okay. Speak up. Speak up. Say who you oh, are. Yeah. I'm ready to get beat again. Um, tell <laughs> us your name again. My name is Francesca. And what do you want to have happen? It's awesome. I hopefully want to win. Yeah. All right. And what do you, what message do you want to send to whoever comes against you? You might win. Might. <laughs> <laughs> I think, might. I believe that what Francesca meant to say was that she is looking forward to her first win, and she is looking forward to having that first win in the summer against uh, whomever may. Uh, whomever may come by, possibly her mother. I think her. Um, Ooh. If that, uh, <laughs> we could do a whole mother-daughter thing. <laughs> uh, any other people who want to put out a call? A challenge. Lay some groundwork for the sword fight. Anybody? Angry cow. Angry cow will take on my oh, man. Challenger. I will take on whoever, however this sets up. Alright. Okay. So, okay. Andrew Cowan's okay. also in. You want to hold on to the music? Yeah, I'll keep it if you're done. If you want to take a picture of me, then. It's okay, I read them. Okay, well. Mostly I ran out of time, that was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, so. the performance that ran out of time. Mm -hmm. so, and then uh, we, we would all like to remind you that January 19th, yes. at Avenue Arts, the uh, Kathleen Howland Arena, mm -hmm. the, uh, I'm approaching this as a fighter, not as a performer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, July, January 19th, the Aztlude, the tournament for the first ever Riding Night Sword F Ch Fighting Championship. Woo! The three With pounds the of wood. The pencil the of gold. The three pounds of wood. The pencil of wood. And of course, your <laughs> first official entrance into that tournament, Daria Quinn, will be defending her 3-0 record against whomever decides to show up. You still have, what, about a month or yep. about a month to <laughs> sign up? Month, yep. So good. that's uh, ridingnights.com, mm -hmm. and you go there, and you can sign up, and you don't have to have had a sword fight to join in the fun, but... Can we nominate people? They have to agree to it. They have to agree to it. Awesome. But, I think you need nominated. Nominated for. I think you need to sword fight somebody. <laughs> sword fight somebody. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you are a rapper, right? Yeah. You need to agree rapper to, 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 to sword fight up. against you. Yeah. Who's going to at least? Yep. Huh? Who one of your raps? Right now? Yeah, yeah do it. Oh, 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 oh gosh. It's the best spot. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You got the down there? Okay. Woo! <laughs> Woo! 
Do you do this? Is both, there a particular way I should say? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Both, both, both ways at the same time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woke up late this morning with some lesions in my head. I bloody all over, almost couldn't comprehend. It makes me sick when I drift like this, and I can't control the thoughts inside my mind. Like a blunder, but I can't rewind. I'm trapped in lost in space and time. Whoa, putting pieces together like it's a game of Clue. Investigate the murder. You heard of what Colonel Mustard do? Bashing people's heads with the crowbar or the shiv. Well, guess who? Was it the man with hair and earring jewels, or is it that blondie with blue eyes and the tattoos? Could it be the lady with small lips and a bad mood? Well, someone isn't. Trouble, so you better pop that bubble, feel the click and feel the sweat. It's like you're running out of breath. Guess at a time that I pick up the pace and I'll go through, but also I'm winning this race. Something is trivial, check me, I'm killing you, aiming down the sights, about to go, yikes! All right, fine, I gotta admit that I don't use guns, so how do I get to the point where I'm firing off a click, click? Scrap my mind because of brain trauma. I fit these words inside an online because I'm so broke. Ain't no joke. Peanut butter bread is filling this hole. Still want mo? That's for sure. Writing these lines like a blindfold alone. All right, get back to the point here. Found two dead in a dull long rapier. Sit like categories with the evidence in front of me. Sherlock Holmes himself would even request extra company. Agatha Christie couldn't sift through misty ambiguity. Scratch our heads to lottery tickets. Everyone's a mystery. Feel like my mind is a car without brakes. Pumping so hard and afraid of the stakes. Grilling these perks like a new form and lining them up to start to determine what. Who done it? I don't know. Last lot like a TV show. Got to swing. I scream. Oh no! Point that gun with no ammo. Woke up to some darkness and the noises that a car would make to barely even breathe. Given this guy's sweaty socks, it tastes we go so fast. I inhale. Yes. How can I free these arms? How can I free these legs? The taste of fungus mayonnaise. My marinated breath floods my esophagus. Sends tingles down my spine. Pressure shoots to the mind. My butt cheeks start to clench. A thirst I need to quench. The car, it comes to a halt. Body momentum keeps up. Soon as the trunk goes ajar. And up a cup to his jaw. Running and running because I'm so scared. Where am I going and where have I been? Going in circle, been jumping through hurdles. Been wondering when this will cut the commercial. I'll be lying around my head into a tree. Fall back where everything turned to debris. Finally get to just open my eyes. Waking up late. Again, why even try? Thank you. Keep <laughs> uh, Amount of time? How long do we want? Uh, between hour. 24 hours. 24 hours. Between 2 and 5 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 2 and 5? All right. 28. You know what I'm getting. Yes, sir. I'm standing in the round. All right. All right. This first one is called Hollow Applause. You cheer when your president calls out fake news and attacks the press. You applaud when your president suggests banning protests. You celebrate when your president tries to stop Muslims from entering the country. You support your president as he promises to negate the 14th Amendment. So when you say you love the Constitution, what you really mean is simply that you love guns. Mm. This one I wrote right before the election. Thank you called I Hope God is Playing Golf on Tuesday. <laughs> I've noticed every time I hear election results were the work of God, or in the words of Franklin Graham, I believe this election God showed up, that the winner is so divinely chosen is always from the same party. And it makes me wonder what God is doing the rest of the time. Does God only occasionally care about a political victor? Did God in November of 2012 have a hot date? Maybe God was caught in celestial traffic or stranded with flat tire. Maybe the couch was too comfy and God was binge-watching Cheers reruns during the eight years of Obama. Maybe God simply doesn't have the power to influence all elections and has to pick and choose only certain ones. Can you really believe there is a God who has the power and the will to determine the results of elections, but only shows up when your winner is announced? Mm -hmm. This, uh, this is a response. There was a, a ballot measure in California that did pass that uh, was to improve the conditions of farm animals. And in it, one of the farmers they highlighted talked about how his farm was Chicken Disneyland because he hung toys for them. So this is called The Surprise Look on Their Severed Heads Was Priceless. In an article about a voter proposition asking the chickens get cushier lives of still being crammed together but without cages, a highlighted farmer refers to his place as Chicken Disneyland <coughs> because of the toys he is starting to hang for them to play. How sweet, how kind it must be. Your memories of Disneyland must be flashing through your head. 
the cool sights, the fun sounds, all the things to enjoy, the way your children got so excited as they stood in line for Big Thunder Mountain, the screams of joy, the hands in the air, all the smiles until the climax of the ride's end, the magic captured forever for you on film as the ride concludes decapitating each one. A small price to pay, you remind yourself, for the joy on their faces. You are glad you didn't ruin their day by giving away the secret of how the ride ends beforehand. You'd go back, you insist, if only you had more kids to send on the rides. Oh, thank you. Cut me off, Cut me off, man. How many more we got? I have three, but I can stop anytime you want. Go. All right. Next one is called An Order of Jesus Hold the Love. Sometimes the very same people who shout the loudest about their Christianity have a very different memory of the Bible than mine. Ignore the sick. My neighbor is not my problem. Wait, I thought the Bible said love. Hate the gays. It's strange. I could have sworn it said love. America first. I don't remember Jesus drawing lines nor picking favorites. Build walls. Keep them out. But wasn't there something about whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me? Let the poor fend for themselves. Weird, my recollection was love. Kill your enemies before they kill you. Ah, I was certain it was love. I guess I could grab a Bible, glance back, refresh. It has been a few years. Perhaps my memory is fuzzy. <clears throat> this is called the endless wait for the right time. This is not the right place. Lunch counter, football field, Edmund Pettus Bridge. This is not the right time, 1955, 1991, 2018. This is not the right way, marching, sitting, kneeling. The simple truth is that for you, the right time is never. The right way is silence, and the right place is far away from you. you. And the last one I actually wrote this morning called The Endless Line. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Faster, they tell me. More cuts, more speed. Grueling conditions brought on by greed. A job, they tell me. That's what I need. I have three children I've got to feed. Kill chickens, they say. As fast as you can. 14,000 a day by my own hands. The line's too fast. I can't keep up. My fingers bleed from all the cuts. My hands ache. My arms are sore. But every day, they demand more. Imelda complained. Ice broke down her door, so I keep my mouth shut on the slaughterhouse floor. Mm. Uh, I wrote this piece to read at my uh, grandmother's memorial service. There didn't end up being any time for that. I guess my family's control freaks. <laughs> <laughs> called Christmas bread. She called it Christmas bread and Thanksgiving bread and Easter bread, for whichever holiday it was her favorite to make. A sweet white bread with candied fruits and nuts. No alcohol here, not a fruitcake. I don't know how it became grandma's staple or how it became synonymous with love. From an early age, it was very clear, you don't turn down Christmas bread. You learn to like it, one relative told me. You'll hurt her feelings if you say no. So I would take the smallest piece, trying for more nuts, less fruit. Still got a lecture on the size of my piece of pumpkin pie. Eventually, I learned somewhere else that food and love aren't the same thing. That turning down food isn't rejecting love. That made with love is who we are, not what we eat. The world did not end the first holiday when I passed the bread plate without taking any. Maybe a few held their breath. After cleanup, I curled on the, up on the couch next to Grandma and said, I appreciated all the effort and time she put into the Christmas bread. I'm glad to receive that love, even if the bread isn't my favorite. I don't know if she understood, or if maybe later she did. Regardless, she kept making the Christmas bread, and all the other people kept eating it. And we all received her love. Our taste buds don't have to be the same, nor our tolerance for white flour and sugar. We have all of our senses with which to perceive the family bonds, and we are wise enough to know what fills our hearts may not fill our bellies. We are made with love.
All right, not recorded open mic. I'm, I'm okay with being recorded. You want to be recorded? All right. I will, I will record mine. All right, give it up for Azriel. Woo! Thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> I wrote a bunch of small pieces. Uh, I, uh, myself and uh, Ariana, the person who helps us run the fourth Wednesday reading in Kent. At uh, the we, outpost? At the Woo! outpost. We went to uh, one of the other readings in Kent at the last exit, and there were some things that happened that needed me to write about them. So I'll do the short ones first, and then I'll do the longer ones. Um, so and if any of you know Daniel Thompson or D.A. Levy, this one is, uh, a person there did a hippie-ish song about, like with one of their poems. I hope after I die, hippies make songs out of my fantasies. That's all, that's, that was the book. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, my friend believed so hard in the Bible that he said that men were missing a rib because of the existence of women. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so these are slightly... Is that the wrong one? No, no, no. no these are, these are <laughs> um, okay, so this... There was a guy there that I focused on for about 10 minutes to write this piece. <laughs> I wonder if it hurts to pinch one's face in pensiveness for two and a half hours. This must turn into a habit so ingrained that the muscle memory will never be unlearned. A memory so deep that it will imprint itself on the face of my children. Everyone who sees me must know I am a serious artist as I attend the monthly open mic and sit like the thinker with a newsy cap. This pose will also permeate my children. They might even come out that way. <laughs> my poor wife, she will suffer so. The birth will be easy. <laughs> um, so there were a lot of white folks at that place. Like I, I realize that I am also white, but there were a lot of white folks at that place. Okay. So we're so, talking it. White, wow. really. Oh, white. Right. <laughs> black folks want white, but there they are. Okay. He said, "Where's the black folks?" Where's the black folks? <laughs> He, he was informing us I, that I this. I brought this just in case somebody asked. What? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was informing us that this yes, one okay, right. college so, reading so, was so, uh, yeah, so very. These, these, these next two are actually comments about like. Experience like no, I, I, I Experience did the piece also. about about um, you know the social injustice that's been mm -hmm. happening for. I, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. Daria. Yes. 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 That the Daria wrote, mm -hmm. um, recognizing you know African Americans, P POC people of color, yeah. uh, being assaulted, you know that type of stuff. I I really dug that, and uh, I think it was an amazing piece. Thank and you. really, and uh, here I am, like just giving out, <laughs> just <laughs> criticizing right in front of everybody. Oh, no, no. But it's a it's a beautiful work. Um, if you're writing about stuff like that, um, you. definitely keep bringing that energy. Focus <laughs> on that more because okay. I, I heard what you're saying. I dig it, mm -hmm. and it was it kind of and I was like, oh shit, you know, well, this just like spin some shit here. I, so I, 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 was, I was honestly uh, I was honestly afraid that it would if it was like feeling like I was stepping out of my own lane there. There's a fine line. And I, did, I didn't want to be that person. And you got to it. You were like mm -hmm. right there and you're like, hey, you know, I see this. Yeah. But I respect this, the, mm -hmm. I respect it. And I, I was like, that's, that was really cool how you presented that. <clears throat> Thank Woo. you. And with your work about cancer, my mother's a cancer survivor. I loved it. I, it, it, it was uh, interesting hearing both sides. It was like two different subjects, but I get both of them because like my my experience, <laughs> my experience, I, I've dealt with both issues. So personally, 
Um, I appreciate both of your guys' stuff. Thank it's beautiful. You. That's amazing. what I call the understanding. Yep, yep. Yes. That's what you call the understanding. All right, the only people answer. The well, only, right. so, <laughs> so, the only um, thing I, I, I guess I wanted to get to is that stuff, focus on it, and bring that fucking fire. Mm -hmm. you know? What about my last piece? Oh, honest opinion. Growing up and stuff that you experience is always a beautiful thing. But which brings it back to what I was sitting about to say is bringing that that energy, that fire. Like if you got it blurted out, just fucking say it. Pardon my French, but just fucking say it. <laughs> you know, don't. There's no reserve when you're when you're orating. You know, you, it's you versus us. This is your world when you are orating, when you're speaking, talking. Fucking scream it out. Say it like you mean. Exactly. Yeah, I exactly. Mean. Exactly. It's your world. Who cares if we don't understand it? You understand it. Everybody got a right to it. It's your opinion, energy you know? into your words. So, yeah. anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> So, make fun of white people. <laughs> I know it isn't the same, but I feel a little out of my element. Sitting in an avalanche of poets, wondering if poet voice will cascade me down the mountain of poetic conformity. A monotone disaster, shaking in waves like a vocal earthquake, distracting from the brain with boring tones. This is the Keanu Reeves of poetry. And every man of words allowing room for the listener to insert themselves into the pieces like the Matrix. If you die during the piece, you die in real life. <laughs> and this one, I was mad about this one. The blackening blacks stereotyped in the white old guy's attempt at William S. Burroughs' naked lunch. <laughs> Wrapping that word in fiction doesn't make it okay to say in 2018, I hate to be this politically correct, but geez, you aren't Mark Twain. It isn't the 1800s. Even when it was accepted, it wasn't really acceptable. Yeah, I know, I hate the idea of not using words, believe me, but until POC are no longer oppressed, until the system no longer favors your skin color and gender, I feel like you can pick another word. There are so many. This isn't white genocide. This is a beseeching to be slightly more sensitive. You can still be edgy without racism. I promise. Say it to the people in the back. <laughs> Anyone else want to be recorded? All right. Bye, Facebook people.